recording. There we go. And uh, uh, let me let me cover everything first, and then I see people are getting on the call now. And uh, and it actually looks like my my Zoom is working uh, properly today, so that's great. I can actually see people on the call. Uh, well, so, well, first of all, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Hyperliteral Healthcare Special Interest Group. Uh, this is Rich Block. Um, we are, uh, as a reminder, we're uh, recording this event. This is a public event, open source, open community. Uh, as always, we uh, want to start off by talking through our antitrust slide. Uh, I'll show that here. Uh, because we are an open source community, uh, all conversations uh, are really shared, and so be, be aware of any IP that you might share uh, in this context. Uh, never, some, never a good thing to do. Uh, if you want to read details, uh, please refer to our URL uh, for Linux Foundation. Uh, that'll give you details. In short, uh, it's all about being a good person. And uh, as, let's see, as we get some folks on the call, um, I think I know just about everyone. Uh, uh, someone by the name of me or my <laughs> Novak? Yeah, sorry, that's uh, Michael Novak. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's the best uh, I can do to fit in such a small spot, but uh, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm trying to remember, have, have we met before or? I, I'm what, just... I'm shocked, you don't remember? Yeah, so. Um... <laughs> yeah. Of all the billions of people. So yes, um, we have met before. I am dialing in if there's a, uh, I look at the icons. We have raise hands, yes, no. We don't have one for sheepish. Um, <laughs> okay. Because uh, I've been working on other things focused in uh, digital identity, blockchain. So I've been missing the last, oh my goodness, maybe three or four sessions. So, okay, I'm here to sort of catch up and uh, uh, mea culpa, ask for forgiveness and uh, just oh check no, in. great, great to have you on the call, Mike. Uh, is it, do you prefer Mike or Michael? Uh, I prefer Michael, but I'll pretty much answer to anything. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> I've been called worse, so. Uh, so so where are you calling from? Uh, beautiful downtown Arlington, Virginia. Oh, great. Uh, we were just talking about the heat wave earlier. So, are you uh, part of the heat wave? <sighs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I am. It is, uh, it is, it is summer in uh, DC, and so we will get through it. Um, but there's other good things to focus on, such as you know, hyperledger healthcare. Well, tell me a little bit about your experience in in the hyperledger community, and then healthcare specifically. Sure. So um, my background is. Uh, uh, I got started in enterprise software, uh, got involved in blockchain probably 2015 during the cryptocurrency phase. But uh, given my enterprise software background, I said, this is, this is more than what it currently does. So I uh, got involved with the Government Blockchain Association, uh, also got involved with um, Consensus at the time. And then moving forward in the last... Uh, you know, 12 months I've been working with some startups in the smart contract space um, and more recently been focused on digital identities went to the Hyperledger Global Forum back in uh, March I guess I'd be BC before COVID um, so I try and keep in touch with the technologies and then specifically within healthcare um, I don't have to tell everyone on the call that I think this is the right tool at the right time to solve some of these issues that healthcare suffers with from the payer, provider, and patient perspective. And then the one last thing I'll throw in that's my special sauce, I've also been working with conversational voice AI and its application within the healthcare industry as well. Uh, with COVID, it's been a crisis but also a great opportunity because now I'm talking to payers and providers and they're saying, wow, you mean we could use blockchain to manage patient data or manage our records better, stronger, faster, and we could use voice for things like telemedicine or telehealth, but there's also companies working on doing analytics of voice so that I can figure out if you're at risk for COVID or for cardiac arrest or some sort of neurological diseases all by the sounds 
of your voice, the phenomes. Very interesting stuff. Um, so I, the, the notion of uh, digital identity, digital credentials, SSI, uh, they're, they're all just sort of a multitude of sort of, uh, yes. sort of they're all sort of bunched together. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, will, I, I will agree with you. Uh, in line with uh, very much of what you've been talking about is, is something that I've noticed as well. Over, or, uh, I, I probably myself got involved uh, probably about five or six years ago uh, in the blockchain space. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've noticed uh, year after year within the healthcare space is uh, initially when the, the concept of blockchain entered sort of the lexicon for healthcare, it was really focused around the DLT. Uh, and then uh, to your point, very specifically, uh, the shift more recently has been uh, as it relates to, to digital identity management and mm -hmm. uh, or, or whatever we want to call it, SSI. Um, and I, I'm really excited about that. Some of the work that we're doing here in the Seattle area with Providence Health uh, relates to that. Um, and it is uh, by virtue of the fact that, you know, COVID has sort of uh, uh, arrived, uh, hmm. has really accelerated some of the focus in this area. And to be honest, yes. I think that's that really is, uh, to your point, very specifically, that is the way forward. Uh, for very much of, uh, of what's been happening here, because uh, everything tends to be very patient-centric as a result. Yes. Uh, the, the other aspect uh, of function at a, at a sort of more of a meta level uh, is value-based care. Uh, the mm -hmm. shift, yes. uh, yeah, and so, and that uh, by definition uh, puts a lot of emphasis on patient engagement and, and patient management. So, um, yeah, what what you're describing, uh, Michael, is is very much uh, I think in line with what uh, with many of us are seeing. Um, so so thanks for getting uh, getting involved, getting sort of reactivated. Uh, great to have you on the call. Uh, yeah, very you. much appreciated. Um, and yeah, and and it'll be it'll be fun to to get you sort of uh, maybe tied in with. Uh, yeah, I mean that's what I'm looking forward to. Is like I said, I if there was a sheepish button, I would push it because uh, I feel. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I, I need to, I want to, and I need to get involved because I, I'm not going to solve it myself. I'm not that arrogant, but it's a good cause, good purpose. It's the right time for a solution for this specific industry. Yeah, And so absolutely. I get very excited to investigate, you know, how do we set up the standards that can apply and be modified and changed to accommodate you know what comes down the pike but uh yeah it's all good stuff yeah well good good and and sheepish uh I, yeah <laughs> I, i'm i'm an extremely introverted introverted person so uh <laughs> you just sometimes you just do what you got to do and so yes. you, you no know, you just you jump into it yeah exactly well great to have you on the call thank you appreciate it michael yeah thank you uh well uh, good morning to guillermo as well uh how are you doing guillermo Hi, Rich. How are you? Good morning, Good. everyone. Did you want to share uh, some of your news that you passed along to me uh, earlier this week? I think it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. And thank you very much for your support. Uh, what I did was uh, a brief uh, webinar, but it's important one in Argentina. Uh, Argentina is moving uh, very fast and, and getting traction in terms of uh, the adoption of uh, uh, blockchain into the government. Actually, uh, the science and technology department from uh, Cordoba, Argentina, create this webinar. They invite me to talk a little bit about, especially uh, what we are doing and how it works, the, the special interest groups in, in, in Hyperledger. The good news was that all the people who presented uh, were uh, companies that is working into the hyperledger environment or projects. So, so everyone uh, we were aligned into the uh, into the specific uh, 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 details about how it works. Uh, and, and one of the things I presented was I, I get permission to, to talk uh, a little bit with, with uh, some companies have, that has been participating into the past uh, meetings here into the SIG and show basically 
how it works, what is a hyperledger, because as, as uh, we were talking in the last uh, uh, months, there are a huge interest in to have uh, in Spanish uh, information about uh, hyperledger. So one of the goals that we are having into the new created uh, hyperledger uh, Latin American chapter is to try to uh, translate and explain what we are doing in Spanish in our local language. And, and that was a very good uh, experience with them. They, they, they really like it. And this specific uh, webinar was for healthcare. So there was uh, one company from Chile, one company fr uh, uh, from Argentina, and another one, I believe, for, from uh, Peru. So uh, uh, thank you very much for your support. I mean, uh, I can share with you uh, later the, uh, the webinar, that record uh, webinar in, in, in YouTube, but uh, uh, was a great experience. And of course, one of my goals was to uh, show them how uh, SIG Healthcare is working and the coordination between several countries trying to solve a problem like, for example, COVID. So uh, thank you for the, for, for the information you share with me and, and of course all the people uh, who will allow me to present. Actually, I sent the links to the Hyperlayer Wiki uh, where the uh, record sessions uh, are right now uh, post. So I believe that the people is going to take a look into our sites and, and into the agendas uh, that are record in the past. Oh, well, excellent. Uh, well, thank you for that, Guillermo. Uh, and congratulations on the, the opportunity to present to Argentina. Uh, and it sounds like there's a lot of potential growth that's happening there. It sounds like there's some good uh, sort of uh, organization happening uh, and I'm very excited for that. I, uh, I see Brian is on our on the call this morning. So uh, Brian, mental note oh. that it sounds like uh, there's some very interesting things happening uh, in South America, Latin America. Yes, it definitely, that's very encouraging to hear. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, again, right. thank you, uh, Guillermo. Uh, and yeah, if you can pass the YouTube link over, that would be great. Uh, I'd be happy to share that with membership here. We can post that uh, somewhere uh, up on our wiki. Uh, and uh, yeah, that, very exciting, and again, thanks. Uh, thanks very much for uh, for helping to coordinate that, and thanks for the update as well. Uh, thank you for your support, and thank you very much, all of uh, the people who share with me some uh, material. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. You bet. Uh, whatever we can do to support you, phenomenal. Again, thanks. Gracias. Gracias. Um, okay, uh, and I think uh, the, just uh, the rest of the folks. I think uh, I I know. Pretty well. Um, anyone want to say hello? Actually, there, I see someone I don't recognize. Uh, Heels, you, me. Uh, <laughs> would you like to? Yeah, introduce yourself. Sure. Hi. Our apologies. Um, so, Heels, I'm, I'm connecting through our faculty access and through our VPN. Heels stands. It's an acronym for Elsie Living Systems at Nova Medical School in Lisbon, Portugal. We are part of the Hyperledger Healthcare uh, group uh, since two years ago, and we've been following discre discreetly your, your meetings. Um, so our apologies for, for the low profile and the, the generic uh, username. <laughs> well, uh, uh, thanks for that. Uh, no apologies necessary. Uh, do, tell us a little bit about some of the work that, uh, that you're doing in Portugal. Oh, okay, so inside Nova Medical School, um, we have uh, uh, an applied research unit uh, called Exponential Medicine uh, Unit, and we have a, a working group uh, that is called BIG, Blockchain Interest Group, we are part, in fact, of the Portuguese uh, Alliance for Blockchain. Um, and we are specifically interested about the application, of course, of blockchain or 
BLT technologies in the development um, of uh, healthcare service models and in particular um, through the gamification of public health guidelines. Um, and uh, we are developing several exploratory and some pet projects, um, but uh, until now there's, uh, there's uh, let's say in our due diligence process, uh, there's a lack, uh, an overall global lack of maturity regarding the application of these technologies to, you know, translate it to a production level uh, service models or so. so from uh, up to now it's just a uh, research interest and an overall due diligence process that we are uh, entailing at the uh, at global level. Very interesting. Um, so uh, it, yeah, it'd be great uh, to, to learn more um, if you have any... Uh... Yeah, yeah we, we, we definitely are at the stage that we will be able to connect and discuss um, in a more granular way. In fact, we are uh, we already had several exploratory uh, meetings and discussions with some of the active members uh, of this group and companies. Um, so we will definitely pursue that, that venue and that pathway, um, discussing different possibilities. Excellent. Thank you. Well, very good. Uh, so I just, you know, for, and this is true for anyone who hasn't already uh, sort of taken advantage of it. We do keep a membership directory and I'm showing it here. Uh, it's a great opportunity to get your information sort of posted up here. It's sort of a virtual business card of sorts. Uh, and the, really the purpose of this is to share information uh, direct one-on-one -on -one between uh, members. Uh, we started this probably about a year ago and it continues to grow, so I'm very happy for that. Um, and so, yeah, if uh, feel free to make use of that for those of you who haven't. Uh, it's a great opportunity to just uh, find a way to connect uh, and keep in touch with one another outside of these uh, 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 general meetings. Well, thanks, thanks for the update, I appreciate it. And, and again, welcome to the group. Uh, and yeah, sure, uh, we'd love to continue the conversation. Uh, we could certainly find some time maybe in the future if you and your team would like to present uh, and talk a little bit more about some of the work that you're doing and where, you know, where some of the focus of your efforts is, is uh, sort of leading you to. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, anyone else wanna uh, do a quick introduction before we move on? I think I think everybody is. We all kind of know each other. These these are sort of our regulars. So great to have you. Um, okay. Well, let's move forward then. Uh, community announcements. Offhand, I don't have anything to share necessarily. If anyone has a, a meetup that they'd like to uh, to share, uh, or an event that is related to uh, Hyperledger specific, or ideally uh, something blockchain related in the health community, healthcare community, uh, please feel free to do so. Okay. Uh, so let's move forward For, to, uh, oh, I guess, oh. it, sorry. Hey, if there's event announcements, we, um, we at Consensus Health are, are hosting a, a veteran health symposium on uh, August 26th with uh, members from DHA and VA uh, discussing many elements of, of blockchain technology, uh, kind of also data inequities within veteran populations and global public health type of uh, talking points, use cases, and working groups. So that's going to be on August 26th. You can actually go on the website. I'll actually send. A, I'll put a link in the chat here too for everyone to be aware of. But uh, the Veteran Health Symposium is uh, occurring at 10 o'clock on 10 o'clock Eastern Time on August 26th. We love uh, anyone that's part of this group to to be involved as well. Oh, excellent! Thanks, Mike. Yeah, if you want, feel free to uh, post that to listserv, uh, and then that information I'll, I'll sort of uh, loop back into uh, meeting agendas, uh, and that way uh, we'll make sure that uh, we'll we'll help to sort of broadcast that through. I think what was it, August twenty second? Did you say twenty six? Oh, August twenty six. Okay. Yeah, we can uh, we can keep that on the agenda for community announcements, so we get the message out, and then like I said, listserv would be another way to do it, uh, just to get it out to membership. Thanks for that, Mike. Thank you. Okay, uh, so let's move forward to uh, subgroup updates. Uh, Dennis, do you want to give us an update on the patient subgroup? 
Yes. Good morning, everybody. Um, there is another big change since last time. We started also discussing the implementation of e-consent uh, with, together with the uh, uh, trial protocol plus patient recruitment and uh, possibly with uh, clinical monitoring in the future. And we have been discussing what is the best uh, architecture possible together with IoT and wearables plus, uh, plus uh, front-end mobile. And we are trying to fix the scope in the next uh, meetings. And hopefully we will have a contribution uh, and collaboration by different uh, team members, uh, SIG members. Uh, you, will, you are very much welcome to join our uh, team. And uh, just for a little bit of context, Dennis, some of the work that you're doing, uh, really you've been doing this work in parallel uh, using both Hyperledger Fabric and Sawtooth, is that correct? Yes, and we are getting more uh, focused to Hyperledger Fabric at the moment. Uh, uh, and and any, uh, can you share any sort of uh, interesting, uh, maybe anecdotes uh, with developing for one platform versus the other? Um, <laughs> Are you the right person to ask that question? <laughs> <laughs> this is a very ideological yeah. <laughs> soft to the fabric. Um, the most important, uh, I mean, uh, lessons learned was fabric is much more, uh, I mean, uh, it's much more accepted by in the, in the, in the, in the community. So the, you will have find, uh, larger uh, resources to develop a, a project. And Softwood has also uh, different uh, benefits, uh, especially uh, with uh, uh, more uh, freedom, you can uh, develop your architecture. But Fabric is much better well-known. Uh, and uh, the fact is uh, with the framework uh, you have, you can also communicate with different uh, stakeholders uh, easier. Um, the chain code uh, plus the notes and etc. It it is uh, also better uh, to represent and communicate uh, at the moment than the software. So this was the most important lessons learned from the comparison of the two for one use case. Gotcha. Uh, and the and the focus that you guys uh, have is e-consent uh, for the sake of clinical trials. Uh, and uh, and then just a little bit about yourself. I mean, uh, th th there's some very good connection uh, in Europe as it relates to some of the larger pharma companies. So uh, I, I'm very I'm thrilled to know that uh, that the, uh, the the proof of concept that the team developed is very functional, uh, and uh, it's very exciting to know that uh, you continue to mature that work effort. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, time frame? When, how often, uh, and when do you meet? Uh, thank you, thank you for the. Uh, Opportunity and um, we meet every two weeks on Mondays, um, seven uh, Pacific time uh, after uh, the SIG meetings. So next week uh, will be also uh, the next meeting, next call for our uh, subgroup. And uh, you, will, you are very much welcome to join us. Excellent. Uh, thanks, Dennis. Appreciate the, the update. Um, so I don't see Ravisha on the call for payer subgroup. Uh, do we have anyone from the team that wants to give a little bit of an update? So I'll just, uh, I'll cover it a little bit. So uh, we, we know that uh, Ravish, uh, pres uh, Ravish and his team presented uh, on some of the work that the payer subgroup did, I want to say maybe two or three sessions ago. Um, what they're doing is they're uh, sort of looking at the use case in, in uh, sort of next generation uh, pharmacy uh, as it relates from a patient perspective and prescription management. Uh, they, uh, they, were, uh, they got the go ahead to uh, push their work up to uh, Hyperledger Labs. And so, uh, so it's great to see that that is being taken advantage of. Uh, this is a fairly new use case. Uh, they, they started this work. They're moving very quickly on the work effort. Um, and uh, for anyone that's interested uh, specifically in, uh, in this payer uh, subgroup as it relates specifically to this use case, 
uh, I think they're calling it next generation pharmacy services or something to that effect. Uh, this is a great opportunity. Uh, they also meet uh, every two weeks. I believe they meet every two weeks opposite of, uh, of this meeting. Um, so uh, so it'll be their next meeting will be Friday and then every two weeks after that. Um, for the healthcare interoperability subgroup, uh, let's see, I don't see Stephen on the call. Um, anyone from that subgroup uh, wanna speak to that? So, uh, so I'll speak to that. So Stephen, uh, what, what his work is doing, uh, the focus of his team and, and the work that they're doing relates to uh, semantic interoperability. Uh, so usually we think in terms of syntactic interoperability, his team is looking at semantic interoperability and making use of a blockchain, a DLT at the back end uh, to identify ways to maintain uh, effectively semantic dictionaries to, uh, to, to sort of arbitrate interoperability between uh, disparate uh, endpoints. Uh, that is ongoing work. Uh, they are, I think they're our, our most, uh, our youngest subgroup. Uh, so I think Stephen is still continuing to look for uh, kind of a, a, a team, a consistent core team. I, I think they're around half a dozen uh, members or so. So this would be a great opportunity uh, to sort of step in and help out on that. I'll, I'll say that I would think uh, relatively anyway, Stephen's uh, team is probably the most technical for anyone that has an interest in uh, and getting a little bit more technical. Uh, and I believe the DLT that they're using is, uh, is a fabric as well. Okay, so let's, uh, let's move forward to our ad hoc teams. Ad hoc teams are really, uh, uh, well, they're there ideally to sort of do some of the, some of the work uh, for the sake of the SIG, uh, and oftentimes, uh, sometimes uh, turn into subgroups. Uh, I'll just talk a little bit our, about a wiki uh, redesign team. This is an ongoing work effort. Uh, I'm always looking for someone uh, in the with with Confluence ex expertise, uh, interested in uh, just continuing to evolve our design uh, and trying to find ways to better engage uh, membership, particularly newer members, uh, into the SIG. Uh, and so if you are a Confluence expert, uh, you know, come find me uh, and it'd be great to get your, uh, get your expertise uh, sort of rolled into, uh, into, the, into the special interest group. Um, so let's talk about the use case development team. Uh, Erica, do you want to give us an update on some of the work that uh, you and the team's been doing? Sure. Um, so the team and I actually haven't met in quite a while um, because the Indira and I have been the ones that have submitted quite a bit of detailed content. Um, and I need to go through that content and create more of a high level use case. And that is the one on drug supply chain uh, using DLT. Um, so I'm still working on that. And I, I haven't I haven't really scheduled any meetings because I wanted to get that at some sort of presentable level uh, to show as an example. So um, that's kind of on me to get going on and that's where I'm at with that. Okay, yeah, and, and sort of the backstory to that uh, is this is something that we determined uh, of value, I think uh, not at the most, most recent HIMSS conference, which was canceled, but the one prior to that, we had quite a number of uh, healthcare professionals coming up to us asking us uh, about whether uh, we had use cases available to help uh, sort of flesh out or define, uh, better define for them uh, how Hyperledger might be used in the healthcare space. Uh, and so uh, this is a work effort of, uh, that really spun out of that. I think Wendy Charles took that on initially, uh, and then Erica, you took that over. Uh, and this is uh, sort of a longer term effort uh, in concert with uh, Hyperledger leadership to identify a, prop a proper format, a consistent format for getting use cases out uh, to membership. Uh, and then out to the broader healthcare community. So great to see that this continues to, to move forward. And thanks for that, Erica. Okay, uh, any other comments before we move forward? So a, a couple of things, as everyone knows, uh, COVID virus continues uh, at a global level. Uh, it is uh, very persistent, uh, especially here in the US and I'll speak for here in the Seattle area. We, uh, we continue to, to to deal with this, it's you know things are moving in the wrong direction. We just got a mandate from our governor yesterday. I want to say that uh, puts a little bit more um, uh, curtails uh, many more activities than than we were hoping at this stage anyway. Um, and so uh, I want to maintain this uh, this sort of section for our pandemic support. Really, uh, what it goes to is its funding. Uh, many of us are in organizations that uh, are smaller organizations. Some of them are startups. 
um, and uh, many, uh, and actually, in fact, some of the larger organizations always are looking for funding uh, support to, to support the projects as they relate to COVID. Uh, so this is sort of a short list uh, at, a, at a, both a global and a more U.S. focused level uh, relating to uh, opportunities uh, and resources for the sake of funding. Uh, I don't think I, I'm going to go through these necessarily one by one. I, I do sort of walk these uh, lists uh, uh, in advance of every meeting uh, and sort of uh, take a look to see where the value goes to, uh, whether the, they're, they're being maintained or not. So you'll see in the boldface uh, whether these uh, resources are updated or not. Uh, in general, uh, these are, uh, particularly here in the U.S., these are very worthwhile. If you're a smaller organization, I think less than 150 people, I think used to be the metric for that. Uh, these are called uh, SBB, uh, SBIRs or STTRs, uh, and I call them sitters and sibbers. I used to use them when I worked in government, uh, and these are great opportunities. So um, something to take a review uh, pass through if you're looking to find a way to fund uh, your COVID research, uh, ideally using blockchain technologies. Uh, has anyone uh, done any work or is it currently in, in works uh, with a, uh, a blockchain solution uh, for the sake of COVID? So I would guess offhand, Mike, uh, some of the work that you're doing uh, maybe by way of consensus comes close to that. Yeah, yeah a little bit. Uh, nothing that we can, I guess, publicly announce yet, but we are... Uh, we are in different, um, we're in pre-commercial stages for some of our solutions. So we are constantly looking for fundraising help wherever we can. Yeah, and, and uh, I'll, just, I'll just mention some of the work that I'm doing uh, will, I think, ultimately become public. Uh, it tends to relate to digital credentials. Uh, and ideally, uh, we'll see something towards the end of the year. Yeah, and okay. high risk companies here. I think uh, I we are also doing uh, healthcare in regarding the COVID nineteen. I think we presented it in the high player healthcare uh, group last time. Yeah. Hey, Kamlish, how are you? Yeah. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about that, just just uh, to the extent that you can. Yeah. Hi. I, I'm Gotik. So, so um, actually in India, uh, there is a COVID nineteen cases are increasing, and so with the uh, kind of research institute and uh, my company, we are doing uh, some kind of X-ray analysis using the blockchain and uh, AI to identify the uh, COVID-19 uh, checkups. So right now, like suppose doing the any test in India is cost around uh, two five two five hundred zero zero uh, around and I think two hundred rupees two hundred dollar cost. And using the X-ray, it could be reduced to ten times, and 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 in the some kind of premier institutes like IITs uh, and my startup doing some kind of pilot and some kind of building the infrastructure using the X-ray and the blockchain and AI to uh, find out those cases where we just we just can put the one kind of uh, X-ray bus and all the X-ray taken of the people who pass through those those bus and it will be sent to the blockchain server and it could be analyzed using the uh, x-ray analysis algorithms that kind of work we're doing in india yeah that sounds that sounds familiar but yeah thanks for the update i appreciate that and and is it it, it moves forward yeah it moves forward forward and uh, we are now even extending it to the uh, kind of uh, immunity passport kind of thing like suppose uh, when all this x-ray analysis are tested patients are tested so they can use this record to present to the any authorities to prove that they are uh, they are queer and they are they don't have any uh, covid-19 positive symptoms like that excellent well good it's it's great to hear that uh, that we're seeing some some real sort of tangible action happening here uh, appreciate the update kamlish thank you yeah thank you Okay. And this is uh, Jonathan. The only other thing I would add is what I mentioned on the Wednesday's um, Hyperledger Identity Call, which is that Jack Callahan and I are working in the IEEE Healthcare Identity uh, subgroup on uh, a schema definition that would work between different DID uh, issuers, including uh, zero knowledge proofs. And that's mostly in uh, JSON LD uh, formatting. And so, uh, it, and it sort of highlights some of the challenges of the semantic and cryptographic interoperability to solve this. And I think that's more of a technical problem, but I think that still troubles me as far as our governance framework of, in the end, it's not gonna be binary, yes or no, you are immune for COVID-19. There really is gonna be needing a population health 
monitoring to see how efficacious a, a vaccine would be or past exposure will be. Yeah. So I think that's still, I think, uh, emerging. And I think Brian actually mentioned a little bit about this uh, Linux for public health and uh, maybe this role for that or this new uh, trust over IP framework to help out with the uh, governance and trust policies that actually would tag on to a verifiable credential. Yeah, that's a, that's an excellent point, Jonathan. Uh, it's interesting because a lot of the solutions that I've been hearing about tend to be binary, and I think that is a little bit short-sighted. Uh, it's the case that I think we just maybe don't know enough quite yet about the virus, uh, but it's you know, the speculation going forward is this is something that uh, you would hope has something of a long tail, uh, a little bit more traceability, and uh, and so you know any design going forward has to sort of take that into account and. Uh, if it if if solutions are purely binary, I think there's going to be uh, there's a shortfall there. Yeah, great great point, Jonathan. Um, okay, uh, so so really the last piece of information I wanted to share with you um, is uh, is really we're at uh, today is the last the very last day for uh, for nominations for chair. Uh, that uh, that opportunity closes out at the end of the day today, uh, just just before midnight. So I just want to make sure we were. Uh, not being particularly focused around uh, any one uh, uh, time zone, so we kept it as open as we could. Um, I believe at the moment, uh, Mike is gonna is running. Uh, he's got the nomination. I think you're gonna run unopposed, Mike. Uh, so uh, we'll see how how things go. Darn, I wanted some competition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so if that really plays out the way that it appears to play out, uh, we'll uh, I'll, we'll probably make the announcement next week. Uh, if we do find that we get uh, some other nominations coming through in advance of end of day today, we'll go through a more formal uh, uh, an election cycle, and that'll be scheduled uh, next week. Um, uh, we've got we've we've got the voting stuff uh, sort of set up and ready to go. It's just a question of uh, whether we have to uh, execute on that or not. Um, it has been for me a great opportunity uh, over the past two years, and I think actually. Prior to that, I spent uh, a year or so uh, helping develop the, uh, the Hyperledger uh, 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 meetup here in the Pacific Northwest. That was great fun, and then I sort of transitioned over to the uh, to the healthcare SIG. Um, actually, at the time, it was healthcare working group. Uh, we were very very new at the time, so I would say these past three years have certainly been an, uh, an exciting time. Uh, great opportunity uh, to meet people. I've met some uh, really amazing folks uh, over the years, certainly. Uh, and one of the, the amazing things is uh, I've really uh, had an opportunity to meet people from all over the world with very, very common interests, uh, regardless of culture, uh, literally where, regardless of where they, they live. Um, and we all have very, very common interests uh, and needs. And uh, it has been an absolute pleasure to, to work with so many uh, very, very professional people. So, um, so thanks everyone. I, I really appreciate the, the, the time and the opportunity. Uh, these past few years uh, have been very exciting for me. Um, and, and clearly we have uh, developed uh, an exceptional uh, uh, team. Uh, we have just, uh, just under a thousand members. Um, and uh, and you know, clearly only a percentage of those people, maybe 10% uh, tend to be a little bit more participatory. Um, uh, yet, the, you know, those hundred people or so are, are truly amazing folks. So thank you very much. Rich, this is Ravish. I just joined uh, late, so I apologize. But I just wanted to again thank you all for your leadership. I think it has been very, very helpful. Um, you know, I personally learned a lot about how um, you know you have been doing things. So I just wanted to convey uh, you the same. Thank you very much for all your efforts. Thanks, Ravish. Yeah, uh, yeah, and and of course, Ravish is is one of what I call stars. Uh, Ravish uh, runs our payer subgroup, uh, and you have been doing that for quite some time. So uh, phenomenal, and thank you, Ravish. Yeah, Brian. Let me find the unmute here. And and uh, yes, of course. I uh, thank you from the the whole of the Hyperledger staff, Rich. You know, you've been really great to work with, and and exactly the right kind of uh, leader that we've needed for our special interest groups, but also for this this broad topic. It's such a critical time connecting the healthcare community with uh, the potential for and 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 really the complexity of of uh, blockchain technology. So, um, I I was looking forward to hanging with you at Hems this year. So that didn't happen, um, but I'm sure. There'll be other opportunities for that, uh, and and just you know we owe you a debt. So thank you so much.
for Thanks, Brian. Uh, yeah, very there. much appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Guillermo. Okay, uh, I, I just uh, want to join the same uh, words uh, from all, all the team here. I believe that uh, for me is special because uh, you were one of the ones who really uh, helped me to understand how it works, uh, the, the special interest groups. Uh, you helped me also to uh, create uh, and relaunch the uh, Meetup Hyperlayer here in Mexico because it was uh, since 2018, nobody take care of that. So all the material, all the support, and, and especially all the coaching that you uh, gave me was uh, really amazing. So I just uh, want to say thanks to you. And of course, this is a very special group because I believe that uh, all the information that we get from other part of the world and all the community that is uh, joining this group will help us uh, at least in our region where, where you know it's not easy to handle or to take uh, technology as a, as a enable uh, enabler to uh, uh, to create a better uh, world or a better uh, conditions for our countries. So thank you very much again, because it's not just uh, only uh, a person hosting a group, it's really taking uh, a coordination of, and efforts that everyone can take advantage of that. So. Thank you very much, Rich. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Guillermo. Well, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, and you, you helped me uh, practice my Spanish, so uh, gracias por todo. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm very thankful that, for that. And I think you're a great example of the kind of work that we're able to do through this uh, special interest group. Uh, like I said, uh, the work that we do really doesn't see any borders. And I, I'm just continually amazed that the work we do is, in fact, global. Uh, and, it, and it's felt globally. Uh, and I'm, I'm just excited to see this continue to, to move forward. Um, yeah, Kamlish. Yeah, so uh, I also want to thank you. I'm just uh, kind of kind of involving the Hyperledger Healthcare SID from since its inception, I think 17, 18, and uh, it's great. I think you lead the group very well. And uh, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, thank you, Kamlish. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, your involvement is very critical. Uh, and so it's it's uh, it's a, one of these great things where you know we we come together individually uh, and we form a collective and and that's really the power of the of the organization. So thank you for that, um, Erica. Yeah, um, I just wanted to second what everyone else is saying. Um, it's been a pleasure to work with you uh, as the vice chair, and um, I really look forward to kind of stepping up and doing more and working with Mike or whoever uh, does take over your role. But um, it's been great working with you, and it just makes it a pleasure to call in to know that um, you're hosting uh, and you do a great job moderating. And um, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. Yeah, thanks, thanks for Erica, and thanks for all of your work and support uh, over the past year or so. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, again, it's it's it really is a collective work. Uh, it is something that uh, no one individual can do. So uh, this is, I, I, you know, I just in general, and this is just a very broad my my sort of own interpretation. Uh, leadership, uh, I always think in terms of orchestration. Uh, it's the guy that that conducts, uh, sort of synchronizes all the professionals, all the experts. Uh, and it's really, uh, it's really, it's a reflection of the work that that uh, everyone does, uh, and I'm just, I'm just there uh, to help, uh, to help facilitate, really. So, so fun. thanks for that, Erica. I appreciate it. Um, okay. Well, again, thanks everyone. Uh, I think as it stands right now, if if things uh, move forward as we sort of suspect that they might. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, our next meeting coming up uh, will be on August 7th. Uh, we do have a special uh, speaker coming through. Uh, let me just uh, pull this one up. Uh, it's, uh, it's a team from uh, St. Kitts College of Engineering out of India. 
um, that they have uh, some really interesting work that they wanted to share with us. Uh, we, we got in touch with them, or they got in touch with us uh, several months ago. This is a, a sort of a long-term process. Uh, they have a, a very uh, dedicated team of individuals that will be presenting uh, in a couple of weeks. So I think if we go on and pose, I think Mike will be uh, sort of taking over. Uh, we'll sort of, we'll see how that goes at, after the end of the day. But ideally, hey, Rich, we can't jinx it. There might be the last. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know. we'll stay. We'll lay low. We'll just lay low. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all, all the reminders have gone out. So so we're just in coast mode here. Just we're counting down the hours here, Mike. Um, but then, yeah, ideally, Mike will be uh, picking up uh, in two weeks. So uh, I, I give uh, uh, Mike uh, best efforts going forward and best of luck. And uh, we have a phenomenal group here. So. Uh, thanks everyone. Uh, and again, appreciate it. Uh, have a great weekend and of course be very, very safe going forward. We will, uh, we'll be talking to you soon. I'm sure. Thanks all. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.